Mate. F*** off. How many we lose? Bit of the pen. So, the sun's screening up today. Yeah, it slips off slap. My ears got torched yesterday because um, I didn't put sunscreen on. I was wearing my cap. So, um, I see older people in the front here have learnt from Rigby because Rigby's been wearing his Akubra the whole time. So, I've got my Akubra and Jimmy has got. I'm rocking the. Yanellan. Yanellan. The Yanella. Terry Tower. Pink and navy. It is a f style. Well, it's perfect because it matches it, your, it your shirt yeah. and your pants. So, no, we're good. Spectacular. I, I didn't think. Did you pre. Pre organised? Yes. Yeah. Like fashion in the field. Were you. Have you got like a camera in the. In, in the donger? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you saw what I got up. Put on what pants that I put on this morning. Because no, I don't want then... to see what Rigby does. <laughs> <laughs> Neither do I. Yeah. Look at that. What what on earth could have happened here, Rigby? <laughs> I don't know. We just yeah. Jimmy's gonna show you. Yeah, so this might have been a slight issue we had the other day doing a pull forward a little bit, Jack, and we could see the uh Yeah. No, just nothing to do with reg rigby at all. Um <laughs> we were going for a little bit of a sunset cruise the other day and I tried racing the wheel. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yep. Rigby the speed damn it. <laughs> right, so today we're on our way out uh, to do Red Hill. We've got Wharton set that we did last night and we also have Midnight. So Midnight's the yards that Ant got got his leg kicked. Uh, we're not going to have that again because we've got good cows. Um, and this morning, Dad has flown down to set the water points on the south because we're going to swing to the south and target some of the water points that are having a bit of trouble down there. All right, so we're here at Red Hill and we've got a reasonable number of cattle. Danny and Gaz were about 15 minutes ahead of us. Yeah, about that. And uh, everyone but Gaz has a hat. Gaz reckons he's too cool for school. We thought about grabbing him a hat, but then it was he's going to wear it backwards. Um, but we could always... Do you want a hat? Oh, I'll call, call up and get him to bring one. So... It is usually windy here at Red Hill and they're usually a pain, but today it is dead still. So we're hoping to get this knocked over nice and quickly so we're not out in this heat for too long. All right, Jimmy, do you want to give us just a quick explanation of all your tools here and what, what they're about? Okay, so mm, the most important parts, I guess, are these are our ZTEG opera, um, applicators. We've got uh, and then this is our NILS tag, so National Livestock Identification System. Uh, we got our male end here, and that goes right there. And then we'll slip on the tag, the female end with the numbers and the tag there, and then like that. So when I've got the cow in, or heifer, or uh, bull in the race and in the head bale, just slip in there and just gently put that into their, their right hand ear out in the center. The other one that we've got is a cattle tag that displays the Prenti, uh, the Prenti name. And then the same same deal, they slip into the same applicator basically. Uh, and then they've got the male and female side as well. Our other one is our ear notching or ear marking um, applicator. So this again goes on the same side uh, as your uh, Neil's tag and it's just sort of just like uh, getting a little nip out of the ear and it's something that obviously can't fall off or can't uh, be 
taken off, similar to, uh, unlike these, these plastic ones. The last applicator is actually from, not from the cattle industry, but made good, uh, Jack and Jasmine and Tim and Louise have made good use of that. And that one is a sheep tag applicator. Um, so they just slip in there like that. And then, um, again, similar to getting like a earring or something like that, just bloody um, get them uh, on their opposite, the far side, same, same, on their left hand side, same as these tags. And this is just to indicate that a young bull who's going to be staying on the station has been uh, nutted and he'll be, um, he'll be turned into a steer basically. Right, that's pretty good coverage. And you got your castrator uh, this rings. This one here is castrator castrator ring. So, um, yeah, s small green elastic uh, ring that you can see there. Just slip it over this set of pliers, and then they that expands. And then what you do is you come in, uh, secure the little bull carefully, make sure you get a bit of side shift on him, and uh, get the the back done up right, and then come in from behind, just sort of reach under. Make sure you got both nuts because you don't want a stag underneath. Pull them through gently like that and then take them off and he's all good. Good to go back out into the paddock. And the Nils tags are an electronic identification tag. And so we have readers so we can you know, trace and track and trace the animals. And it also means that when they end up at market, they can trace them back to where they came from. So that's our tags and this part of the operation covered off. So we've got some cattle out the back there, Rigby and Danny giving each other shit. Um, and we'll get started and we'll slowly go through these at a nice gentle pace and we'll just make sure that we've got a hat for Gaz. Fuck me. Fuck off. Uh, if you... Yep. How many we lose? Bit of the pen. Rigby. We'll hold it up. We've just got to get onto that middle one there and just bend it back a bit. That's disappointing. Do you want to have a crack at bending that or? That basically is like a tank trap, you know, if they run at it. Yeah. Look at them, they're all fucking going for it. Um, I'm thinking we just go dirty. Like we'll just, just do boys, get them out of here as soon as we can because they're all a bit fucking annoyed.
Rigby, is it that one? Well, maybe you shouldn't have broken out. Then you'd still be with your mum. Go on, Cal. Go on. Steady cow. There's a big gate open there, cow. Settle out. Relax. Relax, cow. Last one's a bull. Get that. Get Jimmy to get this fucking thing. Yeah, last guy, last guy. Get up, get up. Open, open. Alright, we'll go deal with these ones out the front and then we'll get these ones. Hup. Come on. All right, so that's Red Hill sorted. A bit fucking annoying about the uh, panel breaking and cattle getting out. And um, there's not a lot of bulls here. It's a lot of cows. So Rigby and I were chatting while we were out the back there about the number of cattle. We reckon that probably we set it for Friday and we'll just relocate a bunch of these out to another water point. So we're going to start mounting everything up and we're going to bend some panels back into place and we will get down to Wharton's. Uh, good thing about Red Hill is now the water, like the tank is full, having put that 48 volt battery into it, having that 24 hour power supply there has allowed Red Hill, which is a low supply, to get ahead, even with that 80 odd head of cattle that were in there and that, you know, getting bored and drinking, the yeah, the trough was full and the tank was full, so pretty happy with that. It's a good solution and we're probably going to put that on maybe two other water points that have trouble. So we're on our way down to Wharton's now and um, we'll see what we've got there. But it's only 8.30. It's a bit sweaty, isn't it? It's a bit warmer today than yesterday and I think it's going to be warmer tomorrow than it is today. So. <laughs> I think us southerners are gonna have to get used to it. Except for big, big Gaz and Danny. <laughs> We're all southerners to you guys. <laughs> yeah, now this is something that you've got to look at here. We've got Gaz and he's got an undershirt on because he reckons that it's not warm enough. He's mad. <laughs> he is mad. <laughs> Alright Gaz, give us a give us a oh look at him. He's sorted. It looks more like a cattleman than anyone else here. That's should wear his glasses. Yeah, well, it's because he can't put it on his head anymore. Look at him. He's sick. Now, do you want to tell us a bit about your hat, Gaz? It's a museum piece, I think I told. Yeah. All right. A few battle scars. <laughs> yeah. Alright, do you want your uh, first person chest cam? Who do you want, Gaz or? No, he, wants, he wants to take Rigby's baton. Yeah. There's more on the table, Rigby. I'll watch.
This old girl's keen to get me out. Yeah, she wants to go now. They were running beautifully at Pack Horse yesterday. Most of the girls just went through without any effort at all. Yeah, yeah. Once they get used to going through, the more you work them, the more they... And they know, they're walking out. White girls waiting too. Yeah. They're, now, they're, they're going through all the time, out this way. And then when they're not scared of us, they just flow just beautifully. So herd management, the reason we mostly pull bulls to sell. Okay, the reason we're pulling mostly bulls now is because we got behind a little bit uh, at the beginning of the year and the market changed. So bulls you can sell to the, into the export market, so we didn't worry about going around and ringing them. So now we've got to catch up um, and that's what we're doing. So we're going to pull all, all the excess, uh, what would have been steers now, out there as bulls, so they're all being pulled out to make sure we've got plenty of feed left for the cows. And then we're marking all the little ones. Uh, so that there, they'll be steers now, these little fellas like here. Uh, they'll be... They'll be little steers. See, that one's already been done last time I came through. Yeah, you got a couple here to do. Yeah. So they'll have them nice and tidy. Then we'll probably do another spring, another run before... Uh, before spring, it, before, before yeah, autumn, be, before autumn, if we can, it may be one, maybe two, depending upon what the weather does. Now this beautiful little boy, this little boy here, stunner, girl, girl. Boy. boy, it is a boy. I thought it was a girl for a second. Eyesight's failing. Yeah. Eyesight's yeah. failing. Poor boy, you do yeah. have a penis. Yeah. Ignore him. Yeah, let's look at this little heifer here. Yeah, beautiful heifer. Yeah. Now, ah. the reason. Ah. Thank you. The reason we mostly pull bulls is because your ratio of bulls to cows. Yeah. So what we're trying to aim for with our herd bulls, they're the ones we buy in, is about five to the hundred. So five bulls to one hundred. So that's the cows. plenty we need about hundred and fifty of them. And we've got about that number out there now. And they can work for about eight, maybe ten years. You'll always get a few that uh, uh, your natural uh, mortality. You also get with bulls, they fight. Uh, so they you lose a few. And then the perfect example yesterday we had of the bull, the herd bull that we've bought, who her, um, had an issue with his testicles. Yeah, yeah. And we had one uh, poor old Bunty. Poor old Bunty, yep. yeah. He, he had trouble with his pizzle. And that, that is a, a snag with the drop pizzles, that their pizzle hangs down. And if they're going through long grass and whatever, they get prickles in it. Yeah. And then it gets infected and there's an issue. Yeah. One bull, one cow so far. Thank you. Yeah, the book's up there. Yep. Uh, can you tell us why that cow's gone? <laughs> she's um, a little bit friendly. She wants to come to you. She, she, she's, not, she's not like the sheepdog you send around. She's the one that comes back. And then you add to that that she's not feeding a calf. Yeah, she hasn't got a calf on She yeah. doesn't have a milk bag. It's all so dried she, up. She's so. gone back there ready for you to practice spaying on with the other calf. <laughs> so then there's no reason for her to be so cranky. She's not trying to get to a calf. Yeah. yeah. But she's got no reason to be so cranky, so she can go for an adventure. And there's zero reason why we can't take it back to the yard. If exactly. she had a bag of milk, well, you'd leave her here and let her grab the calf out, but she can get back to it. She can have a bit of vet work done to her and then... We can just let her out. Yeah. From there. Four balls, one cow. Are you sure? Because you scribbled a few things out on the book. Yeah, because someone... Point and you, you, you have... No, because we accidentally put two down when it was one. Four balls, one cow. Why'd you scrub out two then instead of one? Well, because at that stage we only had one on there. I didn't want to confuse myself. It's very confusing. I don't know how.
Right. Yeah, so it's warming up a bit now and we're on to midnight. Now midnight doesn't flow anywhere near as neatly as this, but we've got a lot of people, a lot of energy, so we will knock them out. It is 10.26, so yeah, we're not doing too badly for the day, especially since we're getting closer and closer to home. Got that bit of welding to do up the front, so. Silly ball. Yeah, well, he's fine. We put him in the front pen. Took Arms right down. Yeah. Got some friends. Um, did you get the ball tossing your table on camera? You didn't. It was in the fridge. <laughs> yeah, so we had a little fella who actually went under the table and took it for a little walk. Which was mighty inconvenient of him. Too bad. He was what the second last animal crew. Oh yeah, no, we were we were already in half the stage of packing up, so no, we're good. So we've just been talking about the camels because on the way out this morning, Gaz and Danny saw some camels and we're talking about which one they wanted to eat, and then we sort of rolled on to Chrissy and Biltong, our two camels that we've captured, and what we're going to do with them now. We've had a lot of people saying, oh yeah, just sell them. People want camels, they want to buy them. We've got two camels there, happy to sell them. Um, but the biggest concerns and problems we've had is in the past, people want to just get them for free, want us to do all the work, and then they will take the cattle, uh, the camel for free. And it just doesn't work. We we're discussing a comment that someone had posted up, a very well-educated comment about the viability of the market for camels out here and processing them on site and just the sheer logistical nightmare of even just uh, shipping it out as meat. Yeah and essentially he summed up with saying that the market's too unpredictable and the product demand is not there so therefore as an agribusiness analyst and specialist you would struggle to get investment in setting that up as a enterprise. Yeah, because the carcass weight, uh, the figures they were using was about 350 kilos of meat off a camel out here. Yeah. And we reckon that, yeah, 300 would be good. Um, well, but, probably more down to 200, 250. Well, about 250 is what we're getting off them if we were really good on a bull camel during the pet meat. Yes, yeah. So, yeah, it's just a, not really a viable market and effectively the best thing, you know, is to just shoot them. Um, but hey, if Australia wants to band together and get a market up and going for camel meat and we can make it a profit centre, absolutely. Well, and also create jobs. But we've tried. Create jobs out here. Yeah. We've, we've put together a little bit of a pilot, you know, strategy or program about training um, people out here to using the knives in an abattoir you know process equipment but for pet food which is a nice low stress environment however there's just no appetite really for that out here no appetite because it doesn't investment but also the okay cheers We've just gone past Connections Corner. Danny, I might jump around you somewhere up here. Uh, yeah, but he can always go down the um, the airstrip that he graded because he touched up that track going in and it's nice, nicer to drive on. I think the airstrip track's a little bit nicer to go in. I think that's why we took the gear in last time. Yeah, all good. Danny, you good with the midnight airstrip? into your yards. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it should be good. Oh. oh! Thanks, Danny. 
That is not fair. <laughs> he, he sings onto it. <laughs> Uh, so the viability of the camel market and training people up out here, the biggest challenge we actually have with getting some of the TOs involved is actually royalties. So that is one of the challenges out here with it and getting the industry going. So yeah, we just keep on doing cattle because cattle can make money and again people get upset and saying oh it's all about greed and money and stuff and it's like well would you what, do your job if you weren't earning money well, what gets you out of bed in the morning yeah you wouldn't do you your know? job if you weren't earning money and we are fully aware that cattle are an introduced species to australia oh the really difference. i thought that they were native just like the camels have been here longer than we have like i don't some people really need to just read the comments they before do. they make a comment they do the difference between why we farm the cattle and not the camel is that there is money to be made in cattle and not camel. Uh, we are also, aware they are both introduced. No, but also, we manage. We, uh, we manage, we manage both. the cattle. Absolutely, no, we manage no, no. the cattle. We manage the cattle. Absolutely. They're, they're not feral, they're not free range, they're managed. Well, no, they're free range. Oh, okay, sorry, yes, they're yes. not feral, but they are managed. And, you know, they can be wild at times, but no, they're domesticated stock. Um, then we own them. Whereas the camels just roam the desert doing whatever they want to and mainly remain unchecked. And that's, you know, yeah, everyone who's on that high horse, watch out because <laughs> horses get shot around here. <laughs> um, and speaking of horses, we've got somewhere around 12 to 16 of them and we reckon we know where they are and there's going to be a well, I, I know where they've been drinking. We've got some thermal optics, and we've got some night vision gear. And some company for the for the foal. Oh, you want to catch them? The foal? No, because I've got the collection now. I've got the baby camel. I've got the baby cattle, yeah. the bull. I just need a foal. Okay, so I will... I had one. Yeah. <laughs> I will orphan a horse for you. I haven't asked you to orphan. I've just asked you to rehome. If yeah. we're being clear here, I, I've just asked for a rehoming. Yeah. If I'm its mother, is it still an orphan? I don't know. What do you guys reckon? Uh, so no, we're gonna we're gonna get rid of those horses before they cause more of a problem. God forbid you shoot the horse because they're pretty, but no one cares about the camels. Camels are pretty ugly. Well, that's it. That's easy. It's, 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 you're looking at it, it's easy. Standards. What, yeah. what were you saying? That they, Beauty's oh, in the eye of the beholder. Yeah. Think about the beauty contest they have for camels in the Middle East. Was it you telling me or your dad? That someone said it looked like it's a, a, a jigsaw of a few different animals put together. The <laughs> yeah. camel does. Yeah, a camel was weird... what was put together by a committee. <laughs> oh. I need the little ears, but I like the long neck. Can we have legs that do helicopters, please? Yeah, well, I mean, hell, we saw what helicopter legs could do yesterday. <laughs> the people that matter don't mind, and the people that mind don't matter. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> so, that's the little camel lecture for today. And we're going to go, what? Well, say, but don't worry, guys, we didn't shoot any no, today. No, no, no. Haven't shot any today yet. <laughs>
think. Okay. Jimmy, I'll do it. Oh. Gaz, can you take this back down there and ask him about that pool? Which one? Yeah. The mate you talk about the bull. Yeah. <laughs> Which one? The Rome one. Strong the Rome one. one. <laughs> you point the camera up and, you know. If you touch that, now you can see. <laughs> so the boy here, he's been done. They, it, they haven't dropped off yet. So if you come around the back, you can see. Yeah. Yeah. He was done with a calico pander a couple of weeks ago when Ant and John Boy were here. So you can see it's taking quite a while, but it's the band is still there. In fact, right in there behind him. You can see that they're just hanging on there. Yeah, they're a bit to fall. Yeah. Now that fella, we actually have, he was a close up and the first band broke on him and that's the second band. Yeah, right. So it's good to see that he's, um, it's working. And he was too big for a green band. Yeah, but right. we've got him again and that's, that's perfect. He looks a little bit calmer. <laughs> Probably doesn't want Danny and I playing with him again though. <laughs> yeah, that bull was released from the home yards. And we are 25 k's from home. So he's done a good effort, but this might have been where we picked him up. Yeah. And he knows the country. Okay, so. We're done. We got one cow in there, but she didn't want to play the game. But that's okay, because she's a cow, she's marked. All is good, we didn't need to force her. So... We noticed that there was a lot of calves on the outside. So what we've done here is tied up two of the arms to give the calves that opening because of course they're still learning how this system works. So those two tied up means that there's the break, the gap there for the calves to get in. So we're not concerned about them not going in and getting water and therefore perishing. I don't wanna get dusted. No. It's a bit heavy on the right side. Mm. <laughs> Jack. It's one of those things, Jimmy, I reckon, like, Tim would get sick of, um, like, everyone wants a fly. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> no, I'll just check. You got us, that? Uh, yeah, it looked a little bit heavy on the right side there. <laughs> Well, you know, he is eating everything he can catch. But the problem is he hasn't caught anything yet. <laughs> oh, just like a good brew dog, you know, you gotta you gotta keep him hungry. <laughs> Cheers, see ya. It was so good. Dad just asked him. <laughs> oh, excellent. Now, um, Dad's asked him, oh, you've been in a small plane before? Not this small. <laughs> <laughs> I did say to him, do you want the fly or do I? Uh, he wanted it. That's why I jumped in with Danny yesterday, because I got the fly in the morning, like every should be here and around something there. Yeah. He's pretty funny though, he's got some good one-liners. I think, um, like, well, I can't remember what we we're doing blow down or something like that, and, um, <laughs> and, like, uh, yes, yeah, we're gonna reverse in. He caught two flies in five minutes or something like that. He's like, oh, I think it's time for me to shut the fuck up. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Take it easy on you, <laughs> oh. So how many did we get it at, at midnight there, Jack? Three. 
three steers, two bulls. And I'll stand by that. <laughs> What's the book say? Well, you wrote the book. Well, that's it. I can't remember what I wrote in the book. I was just focusing on making sure we kept tags up and threw numbers. Was You're incorrect. Right? Oh, was it three steers, two bulls? That's what you said two seconds ago. Yeah. What was it? Oh, that's incorrect. Well, what's, what was the <laughs> fucking number? Don't just say, oh, it's incorrect without telling me what number. Three steers and one bull. Okay. I mean, you've got to keep your memory games going. Double oh. vision, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you are so full of bull poo. <laughs> so full of bull poo. See, look, self-centering, it just doesn't work. What does it, it work? It just doesn't roll off the tongue. Oh, no, no. bull poo doesn't roll off the tongue. No, no, no. self-censoring, no. 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 Sorry, I couldn't censor. hear you because you mumbled. I didn't mumble. Do you know what I have? You're welcome. No, this is the stuff I bought online myself and hit. No, it's not. Yep. Sticks. Well, maybe you can do more things for yourself then if you're going to complain. No, thank you. <laughs> Alright, we're back at home. Rigby the welder is going to get on to fixing his truck. Right, so Master Welder Rigby is here. What do you want us to grab for you? Uh, no. You want any fill or anything or you're just going to feed over? Feed over, it should be right. Cool. Famous last words. What's the time? One. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Is that the time? One? No, uh, it's, uh, it's ten past one. Ten past one, right. I You've got an hour. <laughs> You've got an hour. I can't. Yeah, I'm coming. I'm telling Dad he's got to come in an hour. Okay? Hey, like this. You want to get your welding glasses on? Greg, you're going to start welding. Let's go. Daddy will be an hour, then we swim, okay? Promises. You pinky promise, Dad. Bye. An hour, Jack. And a jasmine hour, not a jack hour. Can it be a rigby hour? No. What's a rigby hour? Tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Might not completely a flat bar here. Bit of flat bar? Yeah, just a little bit there. Little gusset, right. See what we got, Jimmy? Now, while Rigby's welding that up, we're going to go and do a short tour in the workshop here. Jimmy, come with me. Let's, let's have a look at something. In the back of the workshop, well, the tire oil room. We have got some shelving here that's made out of old mill column and everything. And then you've got some nice mesh shelves where we've got, you know, the old mill gear and a few float valves and all the like. You'll probably grab one of those to fix up Bullock. And then we'll pop out and we'll have a look at the steel, spare steel rack. Now, also made out of some pretty average secondhand steel is this steel rack. And you can see the welds are really good. She's, she's really quite handy. Now, the person that built that is Rigby's dad. Now, Rigby's, Rigby's dad, Herb, <laughs> he worked here a couple of years ago. And we've even got a photo somewhere of Rigby when he was like, what, 10 or 11? up here on a holiday so yeah um rigby learned a lot from his dad on welding and that's why whenever he does a bad weld we can give him shit don't keep talking myself up yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right let's see how he's going i'll have a quick look around and see if there's anything else that we might need to touch up yeah. anything while we've been going jimmy haven't no Was good. We had to do some welding last time uh, on our side squeeze because we had been squeezing some things pretty tight. So we had some wild things. Um, 
we've also had to play up here because it was bending and cracking, showing signs of cracking along here. That's done another two years since then. And out on the back here, we've welded some mesh on and we've had to re-weld out the back here because it has copper a fair hiding over the years. And yeah, just about the whole two of them at the back here have been welded up again. Cool, we'll go do that. Good. All right, let's go pick up the car that Rigby didn't break. No. Hey, method. Yeah, well, no, it just happened to break at that time. Yeah, yeah. So wait, we'll ditch this and bring the car back. Agronomist, paddle man, <laughs> and the cameraman. Look at him. Jimmy and Rigby are bringing Patricia back, but they've had a few issues with the treadle valve, letting the air out on the caterpillar, on the loader. And Gaz and Danny have got the road train rigged up. So we're going to be taking the back trailer, going to be taking the back trailer uh, tomorrow, but they're going to head down this Arvo with both Rommel and the Volvo, just so we don't have to drive them down in the morning. So I've sort of been going forwards and backwards this about uh, 1.6 Ks between the two, but it's pretty, yeah. Feels like I'm back at the farm because um, we're all talking on the two way so much. So I'm just going to jump out and give him a hand with this treadle valve. Oh, he's just gotten it, hasn't he? See if he cool. <laughs> you just got to hit it harder. I did. Yeah. I did. Good. I did. Uh, just tell him not to touch the right brake. Right. Easy. Left brake only. Yep. Yep. Sweet. Uh, Rigby and I were... Rigby was doing the welding and I was messing around with the swimming pool filter and chemicals and yeah Jimmy jumped in the loader and he headed out and he had himself all rigged up and already had the car spun around by the time Rigby and I would gotten there so nah he's doing a pretty pretty bloody good job and um, yeah he's just loving it. you know getting hands-on stuff so that's nah, great to have that energy and enthusiasm around and um, yeah, we all work together as a team really well. Uh, yeah, pretty high speed and good communications. So, nah. Um. Right, so that's us pretty well sorted for the day. Gaz and Danny are on the way down to Parsons. They'll set two up on the way back and that is just one spot that the plane can't land and it's just a little bit short and in the hotter weather it's just not ideal so they're going to set that so that's all good for Thursday yeah all good for Thursday and yeah Jimmy and Rigby are bringing that, that Nissan bring the Nissan back home so that'll be parked up somewhere that when we get the time, we'll be able to just knock out those wheel studs and put new ones in. And Dad's resting up, and and I'm not far off that either. Probably take the kids for a swim, and make sure that we're yeah got enough energy for tomorrow. We're going to start an hour earlier than usual, just because we want to beat the heat. Cool. Well, thanks for joining us for today on Muster, and I hope you've enjoyed it. Give us a thumbs up if you you are enjoying the content and the diversity in the teams enjoying the content we're putting together uh, it means a lot to us uh, having that feedback from all of you as well so thanks again and we will see you on another day of mastering <laughs>